All right, so my name's Walker Peak. I'm with Commercial Acoustics um, here in Tampa, Florida. And um, just confirming before I get too far, is everybody can see my screen right now? If you'll just say yes or uh, in the chat box, that'd be helpful just to make sure we're on the same page. Okay, great, thank you, Beth. Um, so we are headquartered in Tampa, Florida, and uh, I'm the president and CEO of Commercial Acoustics, and we focus on soundproofing and acoustic solutions um, for a number of industries. We're gonna tell you a little bit today about, um, well, I'll tell you about myself first. So I was a UF grad, hopefully we have a few others of those in the crowd. Um, went back and got my industrial engineering up in New York, Columbia. Um, spent a number of years at Kennedy Space Center, kind of in between those two from 22 or 2010 to 2016 or so. Um, and then I started residential and commercial acoustics um, in 2015, um, product development started in 2013. Uh, with a number of products, I, I was seeing this issue of, um, you know, noise in our apartment. I was, I was living with my girlfriend, now wife at the time. And uh, a common complaint was I was just being too noisy downstairs, watching basketball, having beers with the fellas. It was just too loud. Um, and I thought, hey, you know, if I'm having this issue, it's probably the same kind of problem a lot of other folks are having. Um, so we started the, the uh, company with a soundproofing curtain. Um, it's, it's what we would call our acoustic curtain. It's a soundproofing product that goes over your doors or windows to stop sound. Um, and when we were selling that for a number of years, developing it and getting it into distribution, I was getting the same question over and over. It, it was beneficial for apartment renters in New York who had lots of uh, traffic noise, but not to those people in Maitland and Orlando who uh, they lived in an apartment and they could hear their neighbors walking above or sometimes their neighbors, dogs or cats even. And uh, they were saying, hey, how, why can I hear everything? Can you help me? And the answer was just unfortunately no. Um, once the you know, the flooring is in, there's really not a lot of options to soundproof that, that apartment or that uh, multifamily uh, project. So we kind of pivoted and started focusing a lot more on our relationships with architects, helping them to design projects with an acoustic mindset um, and using the right types of products and materials in those developments. Uh, today, the goal is uh, we're going to use some acronyms that a lot of folks already know, um, STC and NRC. Um, if that's something you guys are familiar with, uh, great. If so, um, I I'm going to kind of build on those. But STC is sound transmission class. That's how much sound you're blocking in the wall. NRC is noise reduction coefficient. That's how much sound you're absorbing with a product. And those things are often very different the way you approach them. And we're going to get pretty technical on this uh, on this um, Lunch and Learn. So type in any questions or comments as we go. I'm gonna have a question and answer section too. So please be, be ready to throw some guesses in there. So who cares? Um, why is it important to, to design with acoustics? Well, uh, we have a number of industries where noise is actually the number one complaint. And it's something that you really don't ever think about because out of sight, out of mind. So you've got restaurants. Uh, according to Zagat's and Consumer Reports, noise is the number one complaint in restaurants. Um, hospital systems, HCAPs are, are how hospitals are reimbursed for, for Medicare. Um, and they, I think it's 22 or 27 questions at the end of um, patients stay in the hospital. And one of them is, how often did you sleep well at night? And the, the answers are always, sometimes, usually, or never. And you get one point for always and zero points for the others. Um, so if you didn't always sleep well in the hospital, then you don't get a point for that. And, and hospitals are reimbursed. It's millions of dollars on the lines for these questions. And we see the same issues over and over in the hospital systems, Bay, uh, Bay Care, um, HCA, Tampa General, um, hospitals out west, Oshner in Louisiana. We fly out to these locations and help. Oftentimes the facility management staff, it'd be great to work with the architects to help you know design the hospital with a better uh, acoustic mindsets because it's not as simple as just putting in, um, you know, products in the wall, quiet rock or what have you. There's a lot of ways that you can design that hospital with acoustics in mind. I um, mean, it doesn't cost extra either. Um, hotels, number one complaint by a mile. Um, for apartments, that it kind of varies from number one to number four. Um, we see a lot of 
tenants that are upset with not getting their deposits back and that kind of thing. But it's a major complaint for apartments and then for offices. Uh, number one is privacy. Number three is distractions. Everybody wants to work at home now. They're saying, hey, you're less distracted. Well, there's ways to design your office to minimize distractions, and it doesn't require going to depth with the, with the walls. So uh, today we're going to kind of teach you about these verticals and different approaches um, to, to solve these issues. But that's why designing for acoustics is so critical. Um, so we're going to talk about soundproofing, um, acoustic absorption, and sound masking. Uh, those are kind of three core areas where, where acoustics are critical, and, and they're very different than how you approach them. Okay, so soundproofing, that's your STC and IIC. That is your, um, how soundproof is this wall? A lot of times a, a question we get is, can you soundproof my wall? Uh, you know, to what extent? There's no such thing as 100% soundproof. You can get STCs in the 70s and 80s, but still hear really loud music or like a rock band next door. Um, so we, we always measure our soundproofing and transmission loss. And when you average that out across frequencies, you get your STC or sound transmission class. Uh, your IIC is your impact class. That's generally for hotels and apartments and condos. You don't want to hear footfall above. Um, and then for your echo and reverberation control, the acronym we use is NRC, noise reduction coefficient. And finally, sound masking. It really doesn't deal with NRCs or STCs. Sound masking is used to minimize what's called dynamic range or the distractions in an area. Um, and we'll talk to you about how that works and the best way to design those systems and when to implement them. So soundproofing first. Um, a lot of times well, we, we look at soundproofing in three ways. There's three ways to have a more soundproof wall. Uh, the mass law, adding more mass, decoupling, making it more flexible, and then the 1% rule, treating any flanking paths in that wall. Um, to which a lot of, a lot of um, architects and even more contractors say, well, let's, let's double layer the drywall. That adds a lot of mass. Or let's add in resilient channel. That makes it a lot more flexible. Um, two very common approaches we see and very ineffective from a cost perspective. Um, throwing up drywall on the wall does not really improve the STC very much at all. And we'll tell you why that is. Okay, so the mass law says, uh, in a nutshell, every time you double the mass of the wall, you're increasing the STC by five to six points. So really important to have mass. I think we all agree with that. You don't want half inch drywall. You want at least five eighths inch each side. But look at these diminishing returns. Um, for hotels, oftentimes we see brand centers need to hit 55. Okay, that's a very common number or 50 for apartments. A three inch thick concrete wall will get you an STC 42. You double that to six inches, you're at a 46. You double that to 12 inches, 12 inch thick concrete, you're at a 51 STC. You double that to a 24 inch concrete wall, you're at an STC 58. So you would need 24 inch thick concrete walls between every hotel room to hit brand standards. And, and that's why you're seeing that, that you do need mass, but you get those diminishing returns because sound is traveling through the concrete. So even though you're reflecting a lot of sound, any sound that gets into the concrete is traveling straight through it. And that's why you don't want to add mass alone. So to work smart and not just work hard, um, we use decoupling. Decoupling works in a lot of ways. So uh, a single wood stud wall, single stud assembly is not good because you've got drywall here, drywall here with studs connecting the two. So any sound that gets into this gypsum is traveling structurally through this, through this stud and into this side and the receiver and the source side are barely separated. You can use a staggered stud wall or a double stud wall. Great way, a staggered stud wall is almost always, for our money, the most cost effective way to add soundproofing to a project without doubling the wall thickness. Um, you're using the same number of studs. You're going from four inch base plate to six but you're not going with 10 inches of plate here, four, four with a one or two inch gap of the double stud. And it works almost as well as the double stud. And then what we see is resilient channel. Uh, a very common approach, it's kind of the elephants and the acoustic consultant's room is all of the problems with resilient channel. Number one is, and I know architects always like to say, hey, the contractor's not installing it right. Um, 
contractors like to say the architect's not designing it right. Don't, don't use it or use it in the right way. At the end of the day is there's lots of installation issues, spacing, keeping that 24 inches on center between uh, parallel rails, um, making sure they're upside or not, not upside down except for the bottom uh, channel, making sure that you don't have penetrating screws going through the channel into the stud, um, all, all kinds of issues like that. But the biggest thing architects don't know is that you can't put resilient channel on a wall that has any blocking on that wall, okay? So you can't use RC on a demising wall where a TV is gonna go, or where a bookcase, or a shelf, or a cabinet, a heavy picture, a whiteboard. All of those, all of those elements require mounting into a stud, and resilient channel only works by getting a drywall off the stud. So if you're drilling through this drywall into the stud, you're going to crush the RC and create what we call a grounding path. Um, you're grounding that entire system and now you've got this rigid to rigid connection once again. Um, headboards for hotels, that's a major issue. Uh, this, co this contractor in New Orleans spent a lot of money putting RC on both sides of the wall for a headboard wall and then putting um, strapping across those and grounding the entire system into the studs through the strapping. Major issue because now you've got an STC 42 wall in a $300 a night hotel. And you spent a lot of money to get an STC that you're not getting. Um, and look, look out for penetrating screws grounding the flange into the stud itself. Um, so there's constructability issues, but at the end of the day is the architects need to know, architects in general, need to know RC is not an appropriate um, product for demising walls. Finally, 1% rule. Uh, in Florida, one thing we all know is waterproofing is a big issue um, with stucco or EFIS systems. A lot of times you bring in a waterproofing consultant. Okay, you can design a, a, um, a detail that shows, hey, you know, you should have a six inch overlap on this Tyvek, but if somebody's not actually out there making sure you have a six inch overlap with the tape properly sealed and, and somebody just kind of doing a QA on it, you get waterproofing issues. Well, something that's been going on for 30 years now is with soundproofing, we're designing for STCs, but nobody's checking it. So the same leaks we were getting for water, you see the stains, you see the water, you don't see the sound, but you can hear it. And architects generally aren't aware that the apartments or condos or other facilities that they're designing, the number one issue is sound. Um, you're designing that office space or that apartment or condo and you don't know, well, condos, you'll know pretty quick during uh, when litigation gets brought in, but for apartments and, and office spaces, you don't realize that, hey, it's a huge complaint and, and it's left to the consultants and the contractors on the back end to try to fix or retrofit the issues that occurred. Um, so, so making sure that you're actually checking it in the field. Um, a big issue we see with 1% rules is back-to-back -back outlets. I know everybody knows that. Um, don't put outlets or junction boxes in the same cavity. Well, if you're just putting it on your wall schedule, that's not sufficient because that's where the, the framer is looking at the wall schedule, the drywall sub, but the electrician is the one putting in the junction boxes. So if it's not in your electrical details, by the time the drywall sub gets there, the junction boxes are already hung and they're in the same cavity and your STC 50 wall is now STC 40. Um, so knowing where to put those details is critical. 